Hello people, Len here. Welcome back to Forget Me Not, where we left off with Homo, and we continue on with all of the Homo. So, let's continue on with the story. I already read that last episode, that uh, video. I don't answer him, and he bites his lip. His, his expression grows a bit colder. Would you stop talking to me? You'd forget me altogether and hate me. I, I hit on you once and it ruins everything. What? I blink, throwing my eyebrows out in confusion. Not only that, Michael is starting to scare me. The hand that's holding mine starts to hurt as he gradually tightens his grip. M Michael, he's starting to hurt me now. He said, I say in a hushed voice, but he doesn't even notice. His anger's closed him off to everything, even his own words. You'll have such a bad experience with me that you'll end up hating everyone who's gay. At this point, Michael seems almost, seems depressed. If he speaks any further, he looks like he could just break down and cry. I suddenly realized it was a bad idea to say something like that. Poor Michael. It almost sounds like he had a bad experience with this before. It'll be my fault. Because I held your hand. Because I led you on. Michael! I put my hand forcefully away from his. Screaming his name. It's not a loud scream, but it's enough to get his attention. His hands fall from mine and he stops and stares at me blankly. He turns away with anger written all over his face. I try to walk a little closer to him. I want to try to pull out his hand on his shoulder or something. But I'm just unsure of what to do. Michael. I just wanted to ask. I'm sorry. I feel terrible about bringing it up. I should have at least gotten about this more delicately. Well, the only direction now is forward. I have to fix what I've started. Listen, I don't care who you like. No matter what gender they are. I'm okay with it. I'm sorry if I sounded like I was trying to judge you. But I'm really sorry, Michael. We're both silent for a while, until Michael slowly starts walking. I follow close behind. He seems like he's got a lot on his mind, so I don't say anything and let him collect his thoughts. Finally, he looks at me and is finally able to force a smile on his face, then sighs. I'll tell you a little secret. The last school I moved away from, I had to transfer out because I told someone I, something I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have trusted them. I... I just really wanted to live normally again. Can you please not tell anybody about what we talked about? <laughs> huh? Of course, Michael. Thanks. He turns his gaze away from me and watches the waves. We continue walking for a little while until I speak up. Michael? Yeah? Whatever happened to you before, you didn't deserve it. The phrase sounded pretty cheesy, but there were may way more things I wanted to say, say to him. I don't know. I didn't want to hurt you like that other person did. That was the only thing I really wanted to say to him, but it felt so awkward if I did. So in the end, I decided to leave it alone and hope that the conversation would pass. Hmm. Thanks. Michael flashes a slight smile before turning around. He mumbles out something that I can't hear well of the waves, but to me, it almost sounded like... But I did deserve it. Hmm. I'm trying to think of something else to say. Anything. Maybe something funny. I want to hear Michael sigh. Phew. Man, this is so awkward. Yeah. I'm sorry. I really had a scene back there, didn't I? N no, you had every right to. Oh, come on. What time is that anyway? We should probably get going to that diner, huh? I'm kind of hungry. Sort of. Well, racy there. Goodbye. <laughs> huh? Before I can even blink, Michael starts running to a fence, jumps it, and then vanishes again. He has me standing there like an idiot with my mouth wide open. What? How old are you anyway? Five? I sigh heavily and jog to the gate. When I get there, Michael's waiting for me. I win. That means you've got to pay for the food. When did we decide that? <laughs> Joking. I think I've got enough money if we just get shakes and fries or something. Thank goodness, I didn't even bring any money. I'll pay you back later. Nah, that's cool. But if you really want to pay me back with something, you can proofread my research paper for me. Fuck you. Didn't you finish it? Yeah, but I can't write for shit. I sigh as we continue walking, giving in to the method of payment. Fine. W whoa, really? You were joking? Maybe. Fuck you. Stop joking with me! What's a joke and what's not a joke? I just don't know anymore. 
I'm hopeless. <laughs> Sorry, I just like messing with you, I guess. But it would be awesome if you could help me with my paper sometime. Whenever you can. Yeah, well, enough of schoolwork talk. Looks like the diner's not so far ahead. I shield the sun from my eyes It's going to the restaurant in the distance. We walk out all the way to the parking lot and peer in through the glass door. Well, it looks like it's open. I, I'll pull open the door and hold it for Michael, who comes in after me. <laughs> the diner isn't as busy as I thought it would be, considering its location and a tourist spot. The diner has the style of an old-fashioned restaurant with a relaxing atmosphere to accompany it. There's a plaque by an empty wall, detailing the diner's history, as well as that of the family who, lo who owned it. As we continue walking through the diner, Mike and I sit on a table by the back of the diner. I took a look at the menu prices. Michael seemed to be glancing around at the scenery. This place is pretty classy. You don't think they'd be suspicious of two teenage boys in a family diner, will they? He jokingly whispers to me, but I'm too preoccupied with the pricing. The cheapest thing on the menu was a shake, which is four dollars. It's a little bit pricey, but I'm not all that hungry, so I'll make up my mind on the order. Probably just have a shake. I go size and nods. Well, if you're that worried about the cost, I'll have a hamburger and some fries. We can share that. I smile lightly, a little amazed that Michael practically read my thoughts. Maybe he knows me a bit more than I think. Seems like a good idea. With a sigh of relief, I close the menu when I'm finally able to relax. Well, what a day. We went to the beach and even stopped at a classy diner. If somebody didn't know any better, they just assumed we went on a date. You did go on a date! Hmm. Hanging out on the beach and getting treated to dinner by Michael. Hmm. A nice romantic date on the Oregon coast, right before the sunset. Hmm. Uh, is something the matter of it? Hello, I'm Jennifer. And are you two ready for an order? Suddenly, a waitress comes out of the blue and asks us for our orders. I know the pronunciation. I'm not even going to try to correct it. I practically have a heart attack, but Michael seems perfectly fine and gives her our order. I'll have a medium, he'll have one medium shake, and I'll have a steak burger and some medium fries. Alright, what about the shake? We have three flavors. Chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla. What flavor do you want, Emmett? I, um... Yes, yeah, strawberry. Fuck yeah. Alright, that's all. Okay, it'll be ready soon. I go flashes an attractive smile at the waitress and she walks away with our orders. While we sit in silence, I can't help think I can't stop thinking about how the waitress might have mistaken us for being on a date. I think she did too, and I don't blame her. Hey, would you mind if I tried some of that shake? Uh huh. I haven't had a strawberry milkshake for the longest time. When the waitress comes over, we'll ask her for two straws. Isn't that just a little bit weird? Hmm, it is? Well, not just that. Doesn't it feel like we're having a date or something? A date? Haha. <laughs> You're kinda right. If we were a couple, this would really seem like we were on a date. But, but I'm not saying it has been, hasn't been fun. I trail off, and Michael just kind of looks away, not thinking too much about it. In fact, when I'm focused on his gaze, I feel as if his attention is on something else. I twist my he head around to see the table behind us, taking, being taken by a young couple. The man looks slightly familiar. Is there something wrong? No, I'm fine. Hey, I gotta go to the bathroom. If our orders come, feel free to eat anything from mine. Just don't eat the whole plate. He smiles and quickly walks before I'm able to say anything to him. I stutter and then sigh. Damn, he sure is energetic. I pick up the menu once again, and but, and, but upon reading it, something hits me. I wonder if he knew either of those people. He would explain why Michael left as soon as they came to sit down. I twist my head to take another quick look at the couple behind us. When I finally realize who the guy is, he's the gym teacher at our school. If I remember correctly, he isn't uh, all that of a nice guy either. Is that why Michael would walk away from the table? Is there some kind of bad blood between them? Maybe he's mas Michael's basketball coach, too. Or dad. Furrowing a brow, I try to figure out what the problem could possibly be in this situation. But decide to shake my thoughts away and focus on having a good time while I'm out with Michael. What time is it, anyway? 5.10? I guess we have some time. Hi, up back with the orders. Uh oh, thanks. I force a smile and take a sip of my milkshake. My food's expensive, but the shakes are pretty damn good. Especially, I steal a couple of, fr a couple of fries from Michael's plate and eat them. 
Then I start to wonder where he could have gone. He's been in that bathroom for a long time. I start to think it over it and decide to go to the bathroom myself. I figure I'll just wash my hands while I'm in there. But in the back of my mind, I'm hope I hope I'm not being too clingy. See, you are in a relationship. So I'm gonna get up from my seat and walk towards the restroom. On the way there, I glance at the supposed gym teacher, who in return gives me an icy glare. Wow. I raise an eyebrow as I walk away, wondering why he'd look at me like that. Has he seen me around school or something? I because I don't I can't remember ever talking to him. With that still in my mind, I take my way into the men's rest bathroom. It's not too impressive, but at least it's not uncomfortably crammed or anything. I glance around and finally notice Michael shoving something into his pocket, leaving the sink water running. You right, buddy? At first I don't see anything, but he doesn't even seem to notice me there. He's just staring into the mirror. Michael? I call out his name softly. When he finally notices me, he's not even startled. He seems... calm. Do you cut your wrists? Hey, Emmett. His voice is so gentle. In fact, too gentle. I feel like my eyes were deceiving me. This is Michael, right? Uh, our orders came. Are you done in here? Yeah. Gulping, I nod slightly and lead the way out of the room. No, nope, that couldn't have gone any more creepy. Make our way back to the table and I start drinking my shake again. I go sits back down, but isn't eating his food. He's staring directly at me. Maybe he's staring at the gym teacher. Which person is it then? I take a break from my from drinking my shake and look up at him, lowering my voice with concern. Michael, are you going to eat? He does move slightly as he seems to be slowly observing my words. Oh, I'm not really at all that hungry. I'm a little shocked by his statement and wonder why he's suddenly not hungry. When I recall what he said earlier, he specifically told me not to eat too much of his food. Are you alright? You seem sick? Huh? Oh. I'm not feeling so well, actually. I don't know why. Do you want to start walking home? Hmm. He seems hesitant, like he wants to answer me. But with that face he gives me, I can tell exactly what he's thinking. I'll give I'll get the waitress and ask her for some packages to take food home. Thanks. I get up and walk towards the register, where I see the waitress. She notices and asks if I need any, something. Can we have a couple of plastic takeout packages? No problem. When are you all ready, just come back to the register to pay. She nods and prepares some plastic containers while I meet Michael in the back of the table. Back at the table. Feeling any better? I take a close look at him. He's obviously not looking any better. I quickly try to change the subject before he can respond. Uh, well, how about you go up and pay and I'll take care of all the food. Okay. He nods and gets up, slowly staggering to the register desk. I turn away and start packing up the leftover food, though it's not even eaten. As for the shake, I decide to just carry it along with me. I finish packing up all the food as Michael returns with the bill taken care of. I nod to indicate it's about time to get the move on, and we both walk out of the diner. I find it strange that when I look back at the table behind us, the gym teacher and his family companion aren't at the table anymore. As soon as we step outside, Michael starts the nearest trash can. Oh, oh, oh God. Hey. I almost start running after him, but when I realize what he's doing, he's throwing up, and I anxiously wait, wondering if I can do anything to help. Frantically searching in my pockets for my, ba my backpack, I find some clean napkins. It's better than nothing, I guess. I'm about to walk up and hand him a napkin, since he seems like he's almost done, but then a voice calls up from nowhere. Hey, Michael. I turn, who could possibly be calling him when he's throwing up in a garbage can? It's that guy again, the gym teacher. The woman was with him, is nowhere to be found, and it's just the three of us in the parking lot. So we skip out on practice today. I'm gonna make him British. So we skip out on practice today. I want to be playing hooky with a friend. Are you fucking crazy? I don't know why I'm being British, but I just said it to him. I'm about just three weeks from now, and this is what you're offering to the team? Is this how you pay me after all I've done for you? Michael is still hovered over the trash can, not turning or moving in any way. He noticeably clenches his hands, so he must be able to hear the teacher. He's probably angry, no doubt. The gym teacher seems like he's done some scolding. He's done scolding Michael, but still. The way this guy is treating Michael is completely terrible. No wonder he wanted to skip out on practice today. Besides, it's obvious Michael is sick and throwing up. I really shouldn't say anything. But what should I do? I'm saving real quick. Saving.
done. I'm gonna speak up. I decided to speak up to the guy. It's only it's only right that I should. Besides, I don't have him as a teacher, so it's not like I I'll see much of him anyway. What the hell? What's your problem? Can't you see Michael's throwing up right now? Don't you have any decency? The guy stands up for a moment and lets out a sl slight laugh. Ha, ah, close your damn mouth. You don't understand anything anyway. Oh, fuck you. He turns and, and walks away, vanishing in the parking lot. I glare into the darkness, but there are bigger things to worry about. I turn back to Michael. I hand him some napkins. He uses them and gets himself together for a little bit. Hmm. Are you feeling alright now? Just barely, but yeah. He gazes at Michael sympathetically. I feel useless. There isn't- there really isn't much I can do for him. Hopefully what I've done is enough. It's pretty terrible seeing him sit down and being harassed by that teacher. I nod and we both start walking back home again. Hmm. Hey, Michael? Yeah? Who was that guy, anyway? Hmm. Michael sighs and answers me hesitantly. He's the gym teacher and also my coach. People say he just got hired this year. Just my luck, huh? That's horrible. He's the kind of guy who'd make you want to quit the game from the start. Yeah, well, there are already some guys who skip out on practice soon enough. One guy actually quit last week. He favors me a little. But his kind of favoring is only really yelling at me. Tough love, according to him. Mm. I'll be honest with you, Emmett. You're the only person who makes me want to stay here. If it wasn't for you, I would have dropped out by now. What? That's crazy. That's crazy. Sorry. My mom pushed me, pushed me to go one more year of high school. And if it didn't work out, she'd give me permission to drop out. That's what we agreed on. Because originally, I just wanted to drop out altogether. Hmm. But it's alright. This year has been much better than it was last year. So, I mean, I'll hold out. Hmm. Michael, drop out? I blink and try to grasp the image. Michael, a high school dropout. It definitely doesn't sound like something he'd do. Something must have something bad must have happened at his old school that made him want to completely quit high school altogether. Maybe people bullying him because he was gay. I mean that's a pretty hard thing and pretty much a touchy a very touchy subject for people. Okay, anyway. No bitch. I look down at the ground, not sure what else to say. We walk for a little while until we make it back to the street where the playground was at. It got dark. Hmm. It's looking a little dark out, huh? Yeah, I'm surprised my mom hasn't called me or anything. Mom seems a little... protective. A little? She sure is predative. And overbearing. Very overbearing. Well, I would be too if you were out like a guy, with a guy like me. I sigh and gently slap Michael with a plastic container holding our food. Ha. Huh. Yes. You definitely are such a bloody, bad influence on me. But yeah. If we want to talk about a scary friend, maybe you should hang out a little with Sky. Snap. Is Sky really all that bad? I think. I'm trying to put what I'm trying to say into words. Bitch. No, she's not a bad friend. She's just strange. That's all. Smiling to myself, I shrug a little. She's usually the butt of my jokes, but to be completely honest, she's really done a lot for me. I owe her. I nod a bit and realize this is exactly what I wanted to say, and I've said it in the best way possible, I think. I wait for a reply from him, but he only nods a little. After a while, he finally speaks up. Hmm, that's deep. Yeah, I guess. This might sound a little odd, but did Sky... Uh-huh. Ever have a crush on you? He sounded curious, but his face looked somewhat pained. He probably, he probably thinks it's an awkward topic to bring up. Well, when we first met, she did. It's probably why she forced herself to talk to me. But after a while, she dated someone else, so she stopped liking me that way. If it was so, it was so long ago. Feelings changed. Oh, well, I guess it makes sense. Makes sense? I mean, I can kind of imagine that bringing you guys together as friends. Worked out for the better, huh? Yeah, we've been through a lot, I guess. As I trail off, I realize how dumb it is for me to keep praising Sky in front of the delicate Michael. 
Granted, I'm speaking my mind, but you never know with him. Damn, I must be a lousy friend then, huh? I think I've caused you nothing but trouble. He laughs jokingly, but somehow it seems like he's hiding a more complex feeling. What? No, Michael, that's not true. I mean, me and Shai go way back. We've caused each other a hell of a lot of trouble, too. But I've only met you like a month ago. And we'll get to know each other even more in the next video. So we'll see you all next time. I'm gonna say real quick. Yes. Good burn.